Parachuting Hamsters and Andy Russell, Chapter 10. Remember in Chapter 9, they went to the opera and it was Swan Lake. And that kid, Jason, he's such a little poop. He, um, remember he crumbled the breadcrumbs on top of the lady. And um, then um, Tamika was trying to ask questions to make him confess, but it didn't really work. Okay, look what someone did. The orchestra, the orchestra played soft music, the curtains opened. Andy sat back and watched the prologue and the first act of Sleeping Beauty. Oh, it wasn't Swan Lake, it was Sleeping Beauty. Listening to the music was relaxing. Andy closed, uh, Andy's eyes slowly closed. Suddenly there was a thunder-like noise and flashing lights. Andy quickly opened his eyes. Oops, he thought, I've got to keep my eyes open. Aunt Mandy might ask questions. Andy sat forward in his seat and tried to follow the story. I wish one of the dancers would talk so I'd know what was happening, Andy thought. At the end of the first act, the princess pretended to prick her finger. She fell to the floor of the floor of the stage. The king's men carried Princess Aurora to the castle and everyone fell asleep. The theater lights went on. Andy looked at the people below in the orchestra, orchestra level. Many were standing by their seats. Some were in the aisles walking toward the exits. Jason grabbed his backpack. Then he told Aunt Mandy, I have to go to the bathroom. Tamika tugged on Andy's shirt. You better go with him. Oh, I have to go too, Andy told Aunt Mandy. Jason pushed through the people in the aisle. He seemed to be in a real hurry, and he bumped into lots of people on his way to the exit. Please excuse me, Andy said as he tried to avoid bumping into people. Please excuse me, he repeated as he hurried through the exit arch. Men and women were standing and talking in groups in the mezzanine lobby. So there they, there he is trying to follow Jason. Others were walking down the wide staircase to the orchestra level of the theater. Some people were standing on the other side of the lobby by the small counter buying beverages. And he looked at all the people, but he didn't find Jason. He went into the bathroom. Jason wasn't there. When he returned to the mezzanine lobby, Andy saw Tamika. I can't find him, she said. He's disappeared. Maybe he's back in his seat, Tamika suggested. As Andy and Tamika walked toward the front of the mezzanine, Andy felt something soft land on his head. He brushed it off. Bread, he said as a piece fell on the floor. There were lots of breadcrumbs on the floor. Andy and Tamika looked up. The edge of the balcony was right above them. Andy told Tamika, it has to be Jason. The lights flickered. We must get back to our seats, Tamika said. The ba ballet is going to start again. Jason likes to throw things from balconies of theaters, Andy said. Maybe he likes to throw things from windows or balconies of apartment buildings, too. I'm adding this to the list of clues. Andy and Tamika returned to their seats. Then, as the lights dimmed, Jason sat down next to Aunt Mandy. You're just in time, she whispered to Jason. Andy tried to watch the dancers on the stage during the second act, but he kept thinking about Jason. What would one of those TV detectives do, Andy wondered. But before he could answer his own question, the theater lights went on again. People throughout the theater stood and turned to go to the lobby during the second intermission. Andy turned too. Oh my, said, uh, he said to Tamika, look. Andy pointed, look at what someone did. Don, don, don. I bet Jason did it, huh?